I'm going to talk to you about TLS, TOC, plus Lean, plus Six Sigma, uh, describe it rapidly, and try and convince you of my opinion that it is uh, a threat and an opportunity according to the way you look at it with regards to uh, the TOC community. The first point I'd like to make is that I love TOC. I just think we can be open about some of the uh, areas of uh, improvement. The definition of uh, TOC plus Lean plus Six Sigma, uh, of course, there are, there are constraints, leverage points in a system, and you've got to find those and act on those. Okay? And the other thing is the, the throughput world. Don't try and make money by cutting costs. Make money by increasing throughput. It will, I hope, become very clear. For me, Lean is the Toyota way. Okay? And there's something else, else that I will be describing as bad Lean that looks like Lean, but it isn't. Okay? Um, and it's got many things in there. Uh, and one of the things that people often say about it, and this name, lean, leanness, uh, pushes that way. It's about reducing waste, reducing mooders and stuff. But I believe it's a lot more than that. Uh, I'm going to talk very little about Six Sigma today because it's nearly dead. As a movement worldwide, it has been consumed by lean. TLS, talk plus lean plus Six Sigma, is therefore without destroying any of the elements, trying to see how we can do some 1 plus 1 equals 3 between these areas uh, to, to create an even more powerful combined system without killing either of the elements. I have described good and bad lean. Good lean is the Toyota way, the Toyota system. It is an ever-flourishing company, growth-oriented, beautiful manufacturing, beautiful engineering, a lot of other things. With That is good lean. It exists, right? And then there's bad lean, which is basically various permutations in the, in the world, which too often look like just headcount reduction, right? How to go from 12 people to nine using Japanese words. Open talk and closed talk. Uh, open talk. Talk is powerful. It is necessary, but not sufficient. It can benefit from other ideas. It can be made even stronger by borrowing, complementing it with other ideas. Close talk. Talk is better than everything else. Talk is the answer. What is your question? Talk is the only way. And finally, good and bad Six Sigma. Good Six Sigma, you use data, voice of the customer, reduce variability, design of experiments. And bad Six Sigma is just a lot of belts, a lot of projects, and no results. And it's quite common. The strengths of talk. Focus and leverage, 1%, 99%, or sometimes 0.01% and 99.99%. I mean, if you're here, you've probably done this in some form or another. It's extraordinary. You just, you know, you do a tiny little thing here, and everything lights up. It is, I believe, the best in terms of systemic thinking. Well, it's my point of view, anyway. Uh, there are elements of systemic thinking in Six Sigma and Lean and stuff, but uh, it's become something important, mature within the theory of constraints. Uh, critical chain project management, because today, I don't know what the market share is, maybe 2%, but I strongly believe we have the opportunity to make critical chain over 50% market share in managing projects in the world within 10 years. It's got no competition, it works, it's fantastic, it doesn't have the fight against lean or anything else, and that is a real strength. Um, the speed of talk-based improvements, I don't know if anybody's seen one of my videos, which is the most watched, I improved the throughput of a company by 17% in 15 minutes one day. Uh, it, it can go very fast. Strengths of good lean, there's a mistake there. It's not 99% of market share. The 99% market share is lean in general, both good and bad. Excuse me, that's a mistake in my slide. Uh, what's impressive about it is that uh, we have long-lasting results, not only Toyota in its 60 years. I've worked with many lean companies that have been doing lean for 30 years, 40 years. It's there, it's sustained, it's stable, it's not going to evaporate, it's not going to go away. Okay? Um, and it's fairly mature, like everything, it's going to continue growing, changing, improving, but it looks like something now. Uh, more on good lean, uh, it's this obsession on the, on the long term to, to look at 20 years ahead, 30 years ahead, 40 years ahead. Lean engineering, I'm very surprised and shocked. A uh, machine that changed the world uh, a long time ago described all this and said, you know, they're very good in their factories, they're very good in their... It said they're very good at lean engineering, very good at designing things. Nobody's read that chapter. I don't understand why. Good Six Sigma, I, you know, doing a good design of experiment on a complex system is remarkable, powerful, and so forth. Weaknesses of TOC. Market share, it's got about 0.1% worldwide of ways of doing things. 
No big, long-lasting successes after 40 years. That's kind of sad, isn't it? I mean, we say it's fantastic and changed the world. It hasn't yet, in no significant long-term fashion anywhere. Closed talk does not understand good lean. I am shocked regularly by people who try to explain to me that lean and talk are incompatible, but they don't understand what lean is. Uh, the name theory of if in 20 years' time we only have a 0.1% market share, the word theory is going to start hanging on our necks hard because it will be theory with no practice. The last point is we'll start talking about good constraints and bad constraints, not just constraints. Oh, look, that's the constraint. But we would stop and think, you know, that's the right place to have a constraint, and that's a bad place to have a constraint. I might have missed something, but I don't think there's a mature, documented, 30-page thing that says this is how you find the system constraints, which is kind of worrying when we're talking about how important they are. Uh, the thinking processes phenomenon, if you didn't want to kill me until now, try this. If the thinking processes worked so well, why haven't we solved a single big problem in the past 10, 20, or 30 years, depending on the date of birth you give it? And the very weak conversion rate of goal readers to, to, to implementers. Weaknesses of lean, I'll only concentrate on the first one. Bad lean is 90% or more of uh, lean, okay? And therefore, it has a bad reputation. We have problems with what the top label represents, but believe me, I think there's quite a lot of problems with the lean label, right, in various uh, geographies because it's just associated with downsizing. And it's based on making cars, so as soon as you make something else, people start telling you to stop making what you're making and make cars. And the uh, symmetry is lean community does not understand good talk either. I'm criticizing uh, the talk community for not taking time to understand talk. The lean community is just as bad. Weaknesses of Six Sigma, well, it's dead, right? Uh, I don't, there's still quite a few Americans here, so you may get the, a different impression. I do quite a lot of international uh, consulting. If it's an American multinational because of the general electric phenomena and so forth, we still have Lean Six Sigma programs, or even one or two Six Sigma programs left in the world. But it's basically dead. Uh, it won't be there in 10 years' time. Uh, and it was consumed by Lean. We, they were married, Lean and Six Sigma, and it's now 99.9% .9 Lean and 0.1% Six Sigma, right? It doesn't shock me because I don't think, you know, the, the, the weight of those two things retrospectively, I, well, lean is more powerful than Six Sigma, especially as we developed it. So it's killed it. And I think, I wonder, I hope, maybe that's the explanation and talking about it will stop it, that one of the reasons the top community has got a, a closed, uh, don't touch me attitude to lean is because they're worried they're going to get consumed by lean, like lean consumed Six Sigma. Okay. I don't see why, if it's happened that way before, it should happen again. It just depends on how good we are at these sorts of things and building knowledge that is outstanding and, and, and results that are outstanding and so forth, and we will exist. Why and how they can reinforce each other. I spend my, I've spent 25 years doing this, so I don't know if I'm, I'm, I, I get the words right. It's so obvious to me. Uh, you use talk, right, to decide where you're going to work. Don't go to the non-bottleneck and start doing things. That's not the point. Find the bottlenecks, the constraints in the system, and then bring out the lean toolbox and do all those marvelous things. It's, it's so simple. And, you know, where's the fight? Um, talk can stimulate an increased throughput. Uh, this is something that uh, matters a lot to me. I'm a horrible consultant, but I don't work in any company that's downsizing. So often people who come to me, especially in the economy being what it is today, saying we have a problem, uh -huh and therefore we're going to cut head down. I said, no, so you can go out the top, you've got to increase your throughput, what's, uh, what's stopping you increasing sales, okay? That's for me one of the, the, the big concrete beauties of talk. Uh, lean can help in reducing inventory and operating expense. Wasn't the objective or one of the ways of doing talk to increase throughput while simultaneously reducing inventory or investment and operating expense? I think we spend sometimes too much time increasing throughput and not enough time to reducing inventory and operating expense. And Lean is brilliant at that. We can do some waste hunting. It's not illegal. Six Sigma can not only be used, I used I've done this several times, if in certain environments you have a physical constraint, there's a complex process, Six Sigma can get 20% more capacity. I've done it in glass making, in paper, and complex processes where in fact, even though it's a 200-year-old process, they don't know how it works. And maybe, why not, and it's hard for me to explain how, uh, Lean can help us find a way to create sustainable systems. Why and how they are incompatible? 
I didn't know what to do with this slide because I don't see anything. Yeah, yeah, we don't put them together and there's no reason, there, there's no incompatibility. Isn't that strange? Isn't this you know, just silos not wanting to talk to each other? The only, and they're very minute points in which there is any reason to have a, a discussion, is one piece flow and buffers. Okay, and I've, I've done those fights in lean communities, don't worry, I've been thrown out the window and stuff. But, you know, ah, lean, one piece flow. Okay, and the other point, but it's not really between TOC and lean, it's more with regards to uh, a Six Sigma is this belt system. Are you going to use that sort of way to, to manage change and change engines or not? But I, what else? Is it a threat or an opportunity? It is an opportunity for open talk and a threat for closed talk. It's all I wanted to say, really. Uh, it's an opportunity for open talk. It's a threat for closed talk. Conclusion, good TLS is good lean, good Six Sigma and open talk. Simple as that. Uh, and I believe that's a, that's a nice opportunity that doesn't kill any of the components and I don't see what the big deal is really as long as it stays with equilibrium in particular between top and lean any questions or remarks please don't kill the messenger <laughs>